Hello viewers. I hope you're doing well. Um, we're back with the pass O level physics and we are still continuing with our topic of waves. Um, I am a teacher at Seroma Christian High School and Seroma Christian High School is located in Mukono district in Uganda. Uh, just a few meters of the Katosi road from a trading center called Chetume. My name is Dennis Mande. I have a YouTube channel. It's named after my name. So it's called Dennis Mande Uganda. It can help you learn physics, even for other, uh, other topics um, outside the waves. Our interest today is going to be about the properties of waves. So the common properties of waves that we shall look at include the following. Number one is reflection. Number two is refraction. We shall look at diffraction, interference, basically there are four. Now there is a fifth one called the polarization, uh, but this one is studied in detail at A level. So, and remember, only transverse waves undergo polarization. So longitudinal waves don't. They don't undergo polarization. And therefore, I put a full stop after the fourth here, after the fourth um, property, property of waves, the interference property. Uh, yes, because we're going to explore the first four. We shall look at reflection, especially this time. And next time we shall look at refraction, diffraction, and end with interference of waves. Okay. Now, like I told you already, polarization is studied in detail. At a level so if you want to know a lot about it you can research oh make sure you perform well so that you are, you are given physics in your combination at a level in case you're interested in taking it further so to study these properties to study the reflection the refraction the diffraction the interference practically in a laboratory we use a device called a ripple tank a ripple tank so let's look at a ripple tank now the ripple tank is just uh, a simple setup it consists of a tray a tray that is slanting a little on the edges um, but at the bottom it's made up of it's made up of a transparent glass so this bottom is made up of a transparent material um, the sides may be slanting and usually made up of a softy material. Um, we shall look at the reason later. Now into the tray we pour water. Remember the bottom is transparent. So we pour water, clean water, clear water. Yeah, you pour clear water into the tray. And that tray is always supported. Is always supported. Um, so we've put, I've put here some kind of support just to illustrate the ripple tank and then at the bottom at the bottom of the support or below the tray we always have a white screen a white screen this white screen uh, is a screen that we use to observe the the waves properly the shadows of the waves now we will have just some simple stands here to support first of all we shall have the deeper at this deeper here we have the bar this one or the plain deeper and we have also the spherical deepers here we are having two and then in connection with the deepers uh always will be a motor so this is a motor which vibrates at a known frequency at a certain frequency this is the motor here a motor um now um, this this deeper is always supported by springs, so you can use springs or sometimes rubber bands, like uh, you saw in the previous experiment, uh, rubber bands. So now we always connect to the motor. We always connect um, a DC supply. This is a DC motor, so we will need a DC supply. I just have two wires here that we can use to connect to maybe dry cells probably. Um, above the water or above the tray, we shall need a light source. So when switched on, it gives the light. So it illuminates the water so that the, the, the waves that are formed here will have their shadows cast onto the screen.
Now, if you are having, if if you have, for example, here, if you have the plain, if if you look at this, if you have the plain deeper, dipping into the water or touching the water surface, you're going to end up with, if you connect. For example, here we've connected a bulb, a battery, sorry, oh, sorry, a dry cell. We have connected a dry cell in this case. We are going to end up with uh, plain or straight wave fronts being produced. So we're having plain wave fronts being produced. And those plain wave fronts, their shadows will be formed uh, on the screen like you can see here. So we can easily see the shadows from here. Now, just a few notes about it. A ripple tank is a device used in the laboratory to produce, observe, and study water waves and their properties. So we always use water waves and we can generalize the properties of the water waves to even other waves. Now, a ripple tank consists of a shallow transparent tray of water supported on four stands. Above the tray is a strong source of light and below it is a white screen. I always encourage you, like I told you, always take uh, the photos of this screen. Like, for example, at this point, just take the photo using your phone um, so that you can have these notes with you. You can copy later into the book. To produce circular wave fronts or ripples, we use a spherical dipper. And to produce plain or straight wave fronts, we use a straight dipper. A straight dipper is just a bar here this is what we call we are calling a straight dipper if it touches the water like you can use your your ruler to touch a water surface you'll have straight wave fronts now if you use one of these spherical dippers to touch the water surface and you lift this arm you're going to end up with wave fronts circular wave fronts to produce circular wave fronts we always use a spherical dipper and to produce plain or straight wave fronts we use a straight dipper a straight dipper is what we call a bar it's just a bar the dipper used must be connected to a vibrator or a motor connected to a source of current like we saw in the diagram and the images of the waves or ripples are formed on the screen if you have a spherical dipper here touching a water surface you're going to end up with a circular wave front so these are circular waves here that i tried to illustrate and they spread out in that kind of style they spread out uh, in concentric circles concentric circles but if you're using a bar or if you're using um a straight dipper you're going every time you tap you're going to end up with straight wave fronts so depending on the on the space available for them to spread we end up with straight wave fronts and these straight wave fronts are always spread out in that in that way from the point where the dipping is taking place or the touching of the water surface takes place now the distance from one wave front to another corresponds to the wavelength lambda. Like for this straight wave front, from one straight wave front to another is lambda. Lambda is one wavelength. So this is wavelength. And also the distance from one circular wave front to the next is also a wavelength lambda. Wavelength lambda. So the first case here illustrates circular ripples or circular wave fronts, and the second case illustrates plain or straight straight ripples. Please do not forget the circular ripples and the plain ripples, or circular wave fronts and the plain wave fronts, because we are going to use them. Now note, note number one. The sides of the tray of a ripple tank are made slanting and aligned with a sheet of a soft material such as a sponge to minimize, the reason is here, to minimize or prevent reflection of waves from the sides. And point number two, to freeze or slow down the motion of the waves as seen on the screen, 
a stroboscope is used. Can you pronounce this? We are calling it a stroboscope. Now, what is a stroboscope? A stroboscope is this thing, this thing here. I already talked about it in the previous lesson. Just because here I'm giving you a chance to take notes about the ripple tank. A stroboscope is a circular disc with slits. That simple. And it's rotated freely about a horizontal axis. Now, uh, you just make a circular disc, put slits like I illustrated here in this PowerPoint, and then you fix it on a certain horizontal axis, maybe using an axo. Uh, you can use a nail here, and then you can rotate it. So you can rotate it. Now, you, when you rotate it, the motion of the stroboscope the motion of the stroboscope relative to the motion of the waves always has an interesting display and, and an optical illusion that makes the waves to appear stationary at a certain point so that you can easily study them. That's why we use this stroboscope. What does it do? It freezes or slows down the motion of the waves as seen on the screen. So once you rotate, that's what happens. Okay, to ob now the observer, how do you use it? We are saying the observer places the stroboscope in a position such that he or she sees the images of the waves on the screen through the slits of the stroboscope. So he sees, he or she sees through the slits of the stroboscope. Now let's look at reflection of water waves. This is the first property that we're looking at. Reflection, reflection of waves means bound, the bouncing back of waves when they hit a barrier. You know, like reflection, basically bouncing back into the same medium. So the waves meet a barrier and then they return to the same medium. Reflection of waves will depend on two factors. Factor number one. It will depend on the nature of the reflecting surface or the barrier. And also, factor number two, um, the reflection of the water waves will depend on the nature of the wave front. In simple terms, the nature of the incident waves. Now, for the, for the nature of the barrier or the reflecting surface, we basically have three. Uh, types of barriers or types of reflecting surfaces. The reflecting, su reflecting surface may be convex, it may be concave, or it may be plain or straight. On the other hand, the wave fronts are in two types. We have circular wave fronts like we've seen, and then we have plain or straight. Wave fronts. Now we're going to look at how circular wave fronts are reflected from all these surfaces and how plane wave fronts are also reflected, reflected from all these surfaces. Note, when waves are reflected, please don't think about thinking about forgetting this. When waves are reflected, their speeds are not affected. Since both the instant waves and the reflected waves travel through the same medium. Please don't forget this. Waves being reflected does not affect the velocity of the waves. So that means that the velocity of the incident waves will be equal to the velocity of the reflected waves. And therefore, we are saying reflection affects neither the wavelength nor the frequency of the waves now here we want to look at reflection of water waves from plane or straight reflectors we are looking at a first type of reflector and these are the plane reflectors now the first case if you have circular wave fronts incident on a plane reflector. These are circular wave fronts 
and their incident on a plane reflector. Let's have the source of the wavefronts. So they are circular. We're just representing one side of them. They are coming from this point. So we are assuming the deeper is here. And then we have a barrier. And this is a plane barrier or a plane reflector. Okay, let, let them reach. So they have reached properly. So what will happen? What will happen here is something very simple. They will be reflected in that style. They will be reflected back in that style. And now here, if you remember reflection in light, if you take two rays from the source of the incident wavefront, so you treat the source of the incident wavefront as the object, the way you do in light, and you take two rays, remember, the rays are always perpendicular to the wave front. So you take two rays and they are incident on the barrier. What will happen? They will be reflected according to the laws of reflection. So you can assume there is a normal here and you draw that such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. What we've done is, is that we've just drawn these ones perpendicular to the wave fronts of the reflected waves. And uh, now, if you trace or you produce the reflected wave fronts backwards, you realize that they meet at a point which we can call the image. Now, if you observe this, that's why I always encourage people to take snapshots. You take photos of these screens. You can measure that the distance from the object up to the screen, up to the reflector, sorry, is equal to the distance from the reflector to the image. The image. This object is the source of the incident waves and the image is the source of the reflected waves so you see that i'm treating that as the object which is the source of the incident waves and this is the straight or plane reflector i is the virtual source of the reflected waves now to show how these waves are reflected you, you, you don't need to show all the details. Just look at the inc the nature of the incident wave fronts and the nature of the reflected wave fronts. And probably you can also indicate the directions using just rays, complete ones, or just short rays. Let's look at the second scenario. We still have the same reflector. Let's look at part, uh, the case two. When we have plane wave fronts incident normally on a plane reflector. Now, this time we have plane wave fronts. The first, the first example, the first case we had circular wave fronts. What about if you have plane wave fronts incident on the same reflector? So we are saying if these are plane wave fronts, plane wave fronts, and these plane wave fronts are incident. Uh, let me show them reaching. Okay, they have reached the plane reflector. What will happen when they hit the reflector? They will go back in the same way they came. You see that? I've, I've indicated the reflected with uh, broken lines. But look at this. Do you realize that the distance from one wave front to another here for the incident waves is the same as the distance between one wave front to the next for the reflected waves? So if you draw the rays, the incident ray will hit the barrier and the reflected ray will go back along the same path because this wave was incident normally let's look at case three plane wave fronts incident on a plane reflector but this time not normally but at an angle this this angle is an angle not equal to nine uh, sorry not equal to zero zero degrees the angle of incidence here isn't zero degrees now what will happen here let's Take the first let's first remember the following I want you to know that for this kind of case where the wave fronts are incident on an a plane reflector at an angle which is not zero or if they are not incident normally it means that we have to remember the laws of reflection that's why I told you, you need a set because we need some little construction here you need a mathematical set of instruments Remember the laws of reflection, and they include the first one, the incident ray, the reflected ray, 
and the normal at the point of incidence or lie in the same plane. The incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal at the point of incidence or lie in the same plane. And number two, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, i.e. I is equal to R, where I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of reflection. Now let's look at case A where the, the, is, the plane wave fronts are incident at an angle. Let's take a case where the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. We tilt our reflector so that the incident wave fronts make, if you draw a line here, it makes the angle of incidence 30 degrees. What will happen? For this case, we are going to have the reflected wave fronts in that style, just like that. Now, if you take the incident ray parallel, sorry, perpendicular to the incident plane wave front like this, construct a normal at the point of incidence. Here we are going to measure the angle of incidence, which for our case we took as 30. Also measure the angle of reflection as what? As 30. And then draw the reflected ray. The rays are always perpendicular to the wave fronts. So the incident ray is perpendicular to the incident wave fronts. And actually, this makes it easy for you to draw these diagrams. You can always start with the rays. You draw the incident ray, construct a normal, measure the angle of incidence. For, for our case here, is 30. Measure the angle of reflection as 30. Draw the reflected ray. And then construct or draw these incident wave fronts just perpendicular to the incident ray and also draw the reflected wave fronts perpendicular to the reflected ray. I'm going to illustrate that. So we have we have tilted we have tilted one more time our um, barrier and we have our incident wave fronts. I said it's easier always to draw the incident ray at an the, at an angle of 90 degrees or perpendicular to the incident plane wave front. Then you construct the normal, measure that angle which you said is 30 for our case here. Also measure the angle of, ref, of reflection from the normal. You will get here where 30 ends. That will be where the reflected wave front will be. And then we start from the point of incidence, then we draw a perpendicular line which will indicate the reflected wave front. And then we maintain the wavelength, the same spacing, and we put the remaining wave fronts. So that's how we put it. And you realize that even here, the reflected wave fronts are perpendicular to the incident to the to the reflected ray. The reflected wave fronts are perpendicular to the reflected ray properly. So this is our straight barrier. These are the incident wave fronts and the reflected wave fronts. And for our case, we are saying that here, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, where I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of reflection. Let us take a case where the angle of incidence is 45 degrees. For this case, it's very easy. Um, just look at this. The angle of incidence is 45 degrees. So we've tilted, we've tilted our barrier um, so that if the ray comes horizontally here, it makes 45 degrees. The glassing angle is 45 degrees, and even the angle of incidence here is it. 45 degrees. So you realize that the reflected ray will also make 45 degrees with the with the normal at a point of incidence. Now here we have the angle of incidence, we have the angle of reflection. Now if the rays are incident, the wave fronts are incident onto the barrier in that kind of style, they will be reflected in that way because the wave fronts are always perpendicular to the they are always perpendicular to the to the to the rays
So we shall have that kind of diagram. I will repeat this uh, just, um, just shortly. Here we are saying the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of, refle of reflection, which is 45 degrees. Now let's repeat this. We still have, have our barrier there. And we are saying if you have the angle of incidence as 45 degrees, you will have the incident wave fronts. If they are plain, they will hit it like that. And then they will be reflected in that style. Very easy, very easy for everyone to understand. And here still the angle of incidence is equal to uh, 45, just like it is for the angle of reflection. Now let's look at this case where um, this is supposed to be part C, sorry. Part C, part C, part C. Where the angle of incidence is 60 degrees. 60 degrees. What are we going to do? We have tilted it further this time. Okay. Let's have the incident wave fronts one more time. Um, it's always easy. If you, cons if you take a ray, which is the incident ray, perpendicular to the incident wave fronts, construct a normal, and then you measure. This angle of incidence here is 60 degrees, that I. Then you also measure it to, to you measure if this is 60 also measure 60 as the angle of reflection and then we always draw our reflected ray then we will be able to construct here or to draw our reflected wave fronts reflected wave fronts with the same spacing but they have to be perpendicular to the reflected ray so we draw them in that kind of style like that here, the angle of distance is equal to angle of reflection, which is 60 degrees. Now, for our case here, we are saying, you see that? This is how they came, and then this is how they are reflected. They are reflected. We've just adjusted the angle of incidence, uh, but the principle remains the same. The laws of reflection are obeyed. Let's look at reflection of water waves from concave or converging reflectors converging reflectors if you're having converging reflectors what happens uh-huh a converging reflector um, is defined by basically understanding that it has it has a real principal focus and even the center of curvature is real so I want you to note this, that the nature of the reflected wave fronts will depend on the position of the source of the incident wave fronts. The nature of the reflected wave fronts depends on the position of the source of the incident wave fronts. So the position of the source of the incident wave fronts is what determines the nature of the reflected wave fronts. Let us look at this case. Case 1. If you have circular wave fronts incident on a, on a concave reflector with a source between point F, this is the principal focus, and P is the pole. The pole is here. The pole is the center of a reflecting surface. And the principal focus, if you remember from light, is a point on the principal axis to which all rays originally parallel and close the principal axis converge or from which they appear to diverge after reflection from the mirror. Now we are saying here, we are saying uh, that if you have circular wave fronts, to make life easier for you, I want you to know that whenever you see circular wave fronts, it means that they are coming from a certain point. Circular wave fronts come from a certain point. Plain wave fronts or straight wave fronts come from infinity they come from infinity so they are part you you always have parallel rays if you have plane wave fronts it means you consider parallel rays if you have circular wave fronts it means you have uh, uh, you will have either converging or diverging rays but if you have a source of of uh, circular wave fronts it means you will have diverging rays let me not confuse you. Let's get back here. 
we are saying that if the circular wave fronts originate from a point, a point which is between F and P. Now look at this. This is F and then P is here, the, the center of the reflecting surface O of the spherical mirror. Our waves incident on the concave reflector. What will happen is that they will be reflected in that kind of style. They will be refle reflected that way. Now, when we go back to the principles that we learnt in light, if you take two rays originating from this point between F and P, those rays will be reflected in that kind of style. They will diverge. Remember this point, the laws of reflection are obeyed, and even here, the laws of reflection are obeyed. So if you produce them backwards, you realize that they come from a point here. They come, they come from a point I, a virtual point, a point behind the mirror or the reflector for our case here. That is a point I, which is a source, the virtual source, source of, the, of the reflected wave fronts. The reflected wave fronts will appear to diverge from a point I. Now, not, it's not that in all cases, every time you have circular wave fronts incident on a concave reflector, that the reflected waves will be, will be circular but curving in the opposite way. No. I told you that the nature of the reflected wave fronts will always depend on the position of the source of the incident wave fronts. Let's look at case two. Plain or straight wave fronts incident on a concave reflector. For this case, these are plain. If they are plain, that means the, the rays are coming from infinity. So look at the first ray. Um, a ray that comes parallel to the principal axis will be always reflected passing through a certain point. If you remember the light uh, nodes. And still, let's take another one coming from infinity. Now, there is a point here where they diverge. So, we we'll realize that the reflected wave fronts will be concave. They will be curving. They will be circular, sorry. They will be circular and they will converge to a point which we will call F. That point is called F, the principal focus. In simple terms, if you have straight wave fronts incident on a concave reflector, they will be reflected in such a way that they converge to a point F and then diverge outwards like that. So in simple terms, the reflected wave fronts are circular. The incident wave fronts were plain, but the reflected wave fronts are circular. We are saying the reflected wave fronts converge to the principal focus F and then diverge out. Always just take a photo. Please don't delay. Like right now you take a photo and it will be easy for you to go through these notes. Now still repeating the same plane wave fronts incident on a concave reflector. Uh, let's have the plane wave fronts incident on a concave reflector. We say they will be reflected such that they appear to be coming from this point here. They will be reflected circular. And they will converge this point and then diverge outwards. You can go ahead, please. Indicate arrows here. Uh, let me do this. Um, just a moment. You can go ahead and indicate. You can always indicate here arrows to indicate the direction of these waves. The incident ones you indicate like that. And then the reflected ones, you see, they were curving. In that way, they were coming, converging to a certain point here. They converged to a point there and then diverged outwards like that. Okay, so you see that. These ones were the incident, wave fronts, incidents. You can just indicate on half, you don't need to indicate on all. And then the others were the reflected wave fronts. 
Let's look at the third case, circular wave fronts incident on a concave reflector with the source of the waves at the principal focus F. The source this time is at F and these are circular wave fronts. Let's take a case where you can easily draw this thing so easily. Take two rays coming from that point. What do you remember about two rays that originate or that come from F? They'll be reflected parallel to the principal axis. Now every time you see parallel rays, it means that we are having plane wave fronts. Every time you see diverging rays, it means we are having circular wave fronts. So we will have circular wave fronts originating from a point F being reflected as plane wave fronts. Very easy for you to remember. Very easy. I will repeat this um, by illustrating without the arrows, without the rays. We are having the incident wave fronts incident on a concave reflector and then they are reflected as plane wave fronts. Why? Because they are coming from the principal focus. Remember why we are adjusting these positions? We said that the nature of the reflected wave fronts always depends on the nature, it depends on the position of the source of the incident wave fronts. Now let's look at case 4. We still have our concave reflector. We look at the fourth case or fourth scenario where we're having the reflector here it's concave. This is the principal focus, the center of curvature. Remember the distance from the principal focus to the pole has to be called the distance from the center of curvature to the principal focus. Now we are having uh, the source of the of the wave fronts, the incident wave fronts at a point beyond C. So it's a beyond C position, position beyond C. And what will happen? Let's have the circular wave fronts incident on a concave reflector with a source beyond C. So those are circular wave fronts. They are coming from a point which is beyond C. Oh, very easy for you to draw. Just take two rays originating from that point. Now, if you remember, if you have these two rays originating from that point, this point is beyond C. According to the laws of reflection, they'll be reflected in that kind of style. They'll be reflected in that kind of style. <laughs> they will be reflect they will be ref reflected such that they intersect from a point between C and F or between F and C. Now, because these are the reflected wave the reflected rays, you see these reflected rays. It means that the reflected wave fronts will converge to this point, this point here and then diverge out, just like I have indicated here. You see that? I repeat. We have the incident wave fronts. Just take two rays. These two rays are going to be reflected such that they converge to a point between C and F. And for that matter, therefore, you are going to have the reflected wave fronts circular and they appear to con they, they actually converge. They don't appear, but they actually converge to this point, which we are calling I. Point I point i so for this case here um the 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 reflected wave fronts will be circular and they will converge to a point i which is between c and f um we can draw the same without indicating the the arrows those are the incident wave fronts and those are the reflected wave fronts. That is our fourth point like we've seen before. Where the circular wave fronts were incident on a concave reflector with a source beyond C. Let's look at the fifth case this time. Here, circular wave fronts incident on a concave reflector with a source between C and F. What about if the source is between C and F? Now you can all guess that the <laughs> you can all guess that the the reflected rays, if you are to take rays, will intersect at a point beyond C. Because this position called the beyond C and the other 
the position called beyond C and the position called between C and F, those two positions are conjugate foci. They are conjugate foci, if you remember light. So let's take two rays. These two rays originating from the point between C and F, they will be reflected such that they converge to a point beyond C. So from the um, object position, this is the source of the incident wave fronts. Uh, we can draw the circular wave fronts meeting the barrier and then they are reflected as circular, circular wave fronts um, converging to a point I which is beyond beyond C and then they diverge outwards they diverge outwards like that let me pause this a little I pause this a little for you to see you can see it properly yep you see it properly and then you can take the photo thank you now the fifth case we're just repeating this um, I'm just emphasizing without putting the arrows we have the incident wave fronts and then the reflected the wave fronts we have the reflected the wave fronts The source of the incident wave fronts is between C and F, and then the reflected wave fronts. The, the source of the incident wave fronts is between C and F, and the reflected wave fronts converge to a point beyond C, which is which we are calling I. And then the last case we are looking at reflection of water waves from convex or diverging reflectors. So if you're having diverging reflectors, what happens? Case one, if you have straight or plane wave fronts, which are instead on a convex reflector, uh, straight wave fronts always mean that we are going to consider parallel, parallel rays coming from infinity, which will always be reflected such that they come from a point called F, a point called F. Now, let's look at, because we are saying these are straight or parallel, or plane wave fronts, sorry. Straight or plane wave fronts. Incident onto a convex reflector. What happens? You see that the reflected rays are diverging. That means that we put our compass here. I told you to have a mathematical set with you. Put your compass here, the sharp point, put it here. And then you draw, you draw the reflected waves like that. You draw them backwards. Ensuring that the spacing from one wave front to another is the same as from the instant wave fronts, from one instant wave front to the next. Maintain always the wavelength, just like that. So the reflected wave fronts will appear to diverge from the principal focus F. This is case to case to case to not case three. Circular wave fronts incident on a convex reflector. This time we are having circular wave fronts incident from a certain point so if you are looking at circular wave fronts it means that they come from a certain point i told you that and if you're looking at plane wave fronts it means that the, the rays are going to come from infinity so they will be parallel so for circular wave fronts we consider a point a certain at, at a certain position here we don't need to worry a lot regardless of the position we shall have the same nature of the reflected the reflected wave fronts so Let's have two rays, just to help you understand how to, to draw this. Two rays hitting the reflector, they'll be reflected in that style and they will appear to be coming from a point I, which is before F, or between F and P. So if you have the incident wave fronts in that kind of style, circular and incident onto a convex reflector, the reflected wave fronts will be circular but they curve in the other way all you do is put your compass here draw concentric circles spacing them equally from one another like that until they meet the barrier once you have this put your compass here and then draw the reflected wave fronts backwards using broken curves like that very easy so the reflected wave fronts will appear to diverge from a point 
I. And and this is where we have stopped for the reflection 